Now, let's take a look at the second text in the 2019 SATS reading paper. We have a fact sheet about bumblebees. What I like to do is read the title, introduction and subheadings, take a quick look at the pictures, but then read the first question in the answer booklet. So for our introduction, we have, at the Bumblebee Conservation Trust, we are passionate about saving bees. Here is why. Then we can take a quick look at our subheadings. So we have save our bees. What's so different about the bumblebee? Don't be confused. Buzz pollination. Did you know that bumblebees have smelly feet? Things you can do to help. Why not try planting these? Energy drink for bees and act now. Now before we read any more, let's take a look at the first question in this section. So question 14. What is the name of the organisation that produced this fact sheet about bumblebees? Well, we read the answer in the introduction. We have, at the Bumblebee Conservation Trust, we are passionate about saving bees. Here is why. So we tells us that the fact sheet is written by the Bumblebee Conservation Trust. So that's our answer. Question 15. Look at the section headed Save Our Bees. Complete the table below with one piece of evidence from the leaflet to support each statement. First we have the Bumblebee Conservation Trust is worried about bees. So let's start reading the text to find some evidence that the Bumblebee Conservation Trust is worried. Bumblebees are among the most loved and familiar of garden insects. The sight and sound of them buzzing from flower to flower is an essential part of summertime, but sadly these fat, furry little creatures are struggling to survive. So there's one reason why they're concerned. Bumblebees are struggling to survive, and if we read on, We'll see that that's because there are now far fewer flowers to provide them with pollen and nectar. But we could have more evidence here as well. If we keep reading, at the time of writing, 24 bumblebee species are found in the UK, but unfortunately, in the last 80 years, two UK species have become extinct and others have declined sharply. So there we have another possible reason. We could explain that two UK species have become extinct and their numbers are declining sharply, even of other species. Now we only need to give one piece of evidence, but we could also write for our answer, two UK species have already become extinct. If we keep on reading, we have, in our modern world of paved gardens and intensive farming, our bumblebees find themselves hungry and homeless. So there's yet another possible reason. We can go back and our evidence could be that bumblebees are finding themselves hungry and homeless. Now the next statement, the leaflet makes readers feel hopeful for bumblebees. We've not got to any evidence of that yet, so let's keep on reading the text. The reason for this is simple and clearly visible. There are now far fewer flowers to provide bees with the pollen and nectar that they need to survive. But all is not lost. You can take action today to help save these hard-working pollinators. This fact sheet explains how. So that's a reason to feel hopeful. We're told that we can take action and all is not lost, so we can help. So the reason to feel hopeful is that all is not lost because we can take action to help save these hard-working pollinators. So we can copy phrases from the text in our evidence. Question 16. In our modern world of paved gardens and intensive farming, our bumblebees find themselves hungry and homeless. This suggests that farming has helped bees, Paved gardens are attractive, bees are good at finding their way, or bees have only started struggling recently. So it can be a good idea to find the sentence in the text. So that's this sentence here. 
Now our first option was farming has helped bees. But here, we're told that intensive farming has caused the bumblebees to find themselves hungry and homeless. So intensive farming has not helped bees, it's harmed them. Then our second statement was paved gardens are attractive. But that's not relevant because the sentence is about the effect on bees, not about what paved gardens look like. Our third option, bees are good at finding their way, is not suggested here. The whole point of the sentence is that bees are struggling, that they are hungry and homeless, not that they are good at finding their way. So our answer must be, bees have only started struggling recently. Notice the sentence starts with in our modern world, and modern means recent, which suggests that before modern times, bees were doing much better. And other sentences in the text support this. So if we read the sentence before, we have, in the last 80 years, two UK species have become extinct and others have declined sharply. So they were doing much better before modern times. Question 17. Look at the section headed, What's so different about the bumblebee? The text refers to bumblebee's cousins. Who are their cousins? So let's find the section, what's so different about the bumblebee? To most people, bees are instantly recognisable, but there are distinct differences between the appearance and lives of bumblebees and honeybees. Bumblebees are larger and hairier than their cousins. So the text is comparing bumblebees and honeybees, and here, their cousins is used instead of honeybees. So, our answer is honeybees. Question 18. Which section of the leaflet is written to inform readers that they are unlikely to be stung by bumblebees? Write the name of the section. So, this text is split up into sections. We can see that each section is a different colour. So the name of the section will be the subheading at the top. And we need to find the section that's written to inform readers that they are unlikely to be stung by bumblebees. So let's try don't be confused, because that's the next section that we haven't read yet. Don't confuse bumblebees with wasps. Bumblebees do not swarm and are not aggressive. Only female bumblebees can sting, and they will only do so if they feel very threatened. Bumblebees will never interrupt your picnic or steal your sandwiches. So, only female bumblebees can sting, and they will only do so if they feel very threatened. So that's telling us that we are unlikely to be stung. Now we want the name of the section, so that's the subheading, don't be confused. Question 19. In what way is buzz pollination more useful than other forms of pollination? So let's take a look at the section on buzz pollination. Only bumblebees are capable of buzz pollination. This is when the bee grabs the flower and produces a high-pitched buzz. So that's told us what buzz pollination is, but not why it's useful not what's good about it. But if we read on, this releases pollen that would otherwise stay trapped inside. Key ingredients in our diet, such as tomatoes, are pollinated in this way. So that's what makes it useful. It releases pollen that would otherwise stay trapped inside, and that helps to pollinate key ingredients in our diet. So that's why it's a good thing. And if we read the next sentence, we have even more. Many other common foods, such as beans and peas, would also be harder to produce and much more expensive without British bumblebees. So buzz pollination helps to make foods easier to produce and cheaper. So we have two points here. We can either explain that it releases pollen that would otherwise stay inside the flower, or 
it makes common foods cheaper or easier to get. But it's just a one mark question, so we only need to make one of these points to get the mark. Question 20. Look at page 7. Why is it important for bumblebees to leave a smelly scent on some flowers? We have, so that others avoid it, because it smells better than nectar, so others know it has pollen, or because bees give flowers their scent. So let's go to the top of page 7. Did you know that bumblebees have smelly feet? Well they do, and they're quite useful. After feeding, they leave a scent on the flower, which lets other bumblebees know to avoid wasting energy landing. The flower will contain very little nectar or pollen. So they leave a scent to let other bumblebees know that they've already taken the nectar or pollen so the other bumblebees can avoid wasting energy landing so don't land on the flower. So we can tick our first option so that others avoid it. Other bees know to avoid the flower because its nectar or pollen has already been taken out. It doesn't say that it smells better than nectar, and even if it did, that wouldn't be the reason why the scent is left. So others know it has pollen is completely wrong. The point is that others know it does not have pollen, and so know to avoid it. And it doesn't say that bees give flowers their scent, and again, even if it did, that wouldn't be the reason why it's important for them to leave the scent. Question 21. Look at the section headed Things You Can Do To Help. Find and copy one word that shows how essential flowers are to bees. So it helps if we already know that essential means very important. But if we don't, we could probably work that out by looking at the text. So let's look at things you can do to help. Bumblebees help pollinate plants in more than 1 million acres of British gardens, and the flowers they find can be a lifeline for them. So flowers they find can be a lifeline. Could that mean flowers are very important to them? Well, let's read the next few sentences, and if they explain why flowers are very important, we'll know that our word is lifeline. No matter how small your garden, you can help to save the sound of summer by providing lots of bee-friendly flowers throughout the year. By bee-friendly, we mean flowers that are rich in pollen and nectar. So they've explained that flowers are important if they have pollen and nectar, and they haven't used the word important, and they haven't used any other words with similar meaning to important except for lifeline. So that must be our word. That's the word that shows how essential flowers are to bees. Question 22. Look at page 7. Tick one box in each row to show whether each of the following flowers is bee-friendly or not bee-friendly. So we have lavender, pansy, herbs and wild rose. So let's scan page 7 and see if we can spot where these flowers are mentioned. We can see why not try planting these, geranium, lavender, and wild rose? So, we know that lavender and wild rose are likely to be bee-friendly. But we don't know about pansy and herbs, so let's find those in the text. If we carry on reading from where we left off, we have many ornamental plants that are commonly found in British gardens, such as pansies and begonias, are of no value to wildlife. These decorative and colourful flowers often produce little pollen or nectar. So we know that pansies are not bee-friendly. They're not important because they don't produce enough pollen or nectar. So we can go back to our question and explain that pansy is not bee-friendly. So now we just need to find herbs. So let's keep on reading. However, there are hundreds of beautiful flowers that do offer these rewards, including foxgloves, lavender, 
geraniums, herbs and wild roses that you can add to your garden. So herbs are listed with lavender and wild roses as offering these rewards. So offering pollen or nectar to bees. So herbs are bee friendly. Now explain why the flowers that are not bee friendly do not attract bees. Well if we go back we can see that we've just read by bee friendly we mean flowers that are rich in pollen and nectar. So if they're not bee friendly that means they are not rich in pollen or nectar. So to get the mark for this question we just need to make a reference to them not producing enough pollen or nectar. Question 23. Look at the section headed energy drink for bees. These instructions suggest that the reader enjoys preparing food, has lots of energy, is willing to handle bees or is skilled at gardening. So let's read. If you find a stranded or sleepy bumblebee you can help to boost its energy levels with a simple sugar and water mix. Mix equal parts white sugar and warm water then pour into a small container or sponge. Place both the bee and the artificial nectar near to some flowers. Notice it says place the bee so you've got to touch the bee which means you have to be willing to handle bees. Enjoys preparing food is wrong because though this is about preparing food for bees you don't have to enjoy preparing food in order to do this. You might want to do this not because you enjoy preparing food but because you care a lot about bees. Has lots of energy is wrong because the preparation only involves mixing sugar and water so doesn't require that much energy from you. And being skilled at gardening is not relevant, so we can rule out the other options. Question 24. Using information from the text, tick one box in each row to show whether each statement is true or false. So now that we're getting to the last few questions for this text, we need to use information from the whole text rather than focusing on a specific section. This makes it more difficult to find the information that we need but remember we need to make sure that we finish the paper in time. So we might need to leave questions out and come back to them at the end if we can't find the answer quickly. So first we have wasps can be aggressive. So if we think back to the don't be confused section they compared wasps and bees. Don't confuse bumblebees with wasps Bumblebees do not swarm and are not aggressive, but wasps are. So we need to tick true for the first statement. And if we couldn't remember that wasps are mentioned in the don't be confused section, what we would need to do is very quickly skim and scan the text looking for the word wasps. Now our next statement, male bumblebees sometimes sting. That's in don't be confused as well. We're told that only female bumblebees can sting. So that means male bumblebees cannot sting. So we need to tick false. Now we have bumblebees only go outside when it's warm. Now I don't remember reading about that. But I do remember that we skipped some of this section here on what's so different about the bumblebee. We read up to the point where we found out that bumblebees and honeybees are cousins but we didn't read the rest. Bumblebee nests are small and they do not store large quantities of honey. So their extra furry coat allows them to venture out on cold days to collect pollen and nectar when honeybees stay inside. So they can venture out on cold days meaning that they can go outside to collect pollen and nectar. So that means it's false that they only go outside when it's warm. They go outside if it's cold as well. And finally you need a big garden to help bumblebees. So if we look at things you can do to help, we're told 
that no matter how small your garden, you can help to save the sound of summer by providing lots of bee-friendly flowers throughout the year. So here, they're telling us that it doesn't matter how small your garden is, you can still help. So this statement is false as well. Question 25. Look at the whole text. Complete the table below to show what the text says you can do to help bumblebees. So we need two things that will help all bumblebees, and one thing that will help a weak bumblebee. You might already have some ideas for what we can include based on what we've read so far. But before we answer, let's look at the Act Now section, because that's likely to include more things that we could do. You can also help by supporting our work to conserve bumblebee habitats and raise public awareness. So, there we have two ways to help all bumblebees. We can conserve bumblebee habitats and raise public awareness. We also know some other ways from what we've read in the rest of the text. We can plant bee-friendly flowers, remove paved gardens, stop intensive farming, or support the work of the Bumblebee Conservation Trust. So now, how can we support a weak bumblebee? Well, we don't have the word weak in the text, but in the section called Energy Drink for Bees, we read, if you find a stranded or sleepy bumblebee, you can help to boost its energy levels with a simple sugar and water mix. So, a sleepy bumblebee is likely to be weak, and we're told that we can help by giving it a sugar and water mix, and we could then move it closer to flowers. So, we can answer help for a weak bumblebee with give it a sugar and water mix, or move it close to flowers. So as long as we have two of the points listed here, and one listed here, we'll get both marks for this question. Question 26. Give one example of the use of humour in the fact sheet. So humour means comedy or jokes. We need to find something that's funny. We could have the bee puns in the fact sheet. So don't be confused or be kind. They describe bees as having smelly feet and drinking what they describe as an energy drink for bees. Some of the descriptions use humour as well. Bees are described as fat, furry little creatures and they explain that bees will not interrupt your picnic or steal your sandwiches. So any of these points would get you the mark. So with humour, we're looking for puns, exaggerated language, or funny phrases. Question 27. Bumblebees are very important to the human race. Give two ways they are important. So if we look back to the introduction, we can see that they describe bumblebees as being most loved and an essential part of summertime. So, we could write that they are loved, and that's important because they are loved by humans. Or, if we look at the section on buzz pollination, we can read that only bumblebees are capable of buzz pollination, and that helps to produce food. So we could make those points as well. Or, if we look in the section, things you can do to help, we're told that there are hundreds of beautiful flowers that require bees to pollinate them. So we could make that point as well, that they help to pollinate our flowers. So to get both marks, we need to write two things from this list.